seem to get a lot of invitations. People like to be around happy people. It's like you don't have to have a lot of money or a lot of status or you don't have to drive a certain kind of car or anything. If you're happy, people like to be around you. And I found out when I was traveling and I was happy, it was really, like I got a lot of invitations. It wasn't, the problem wasn't where I was going to sleep at night. It was when I would go to a course group and I'd get three or four different invitations. It was where, my, where would you have me be? In your plan, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? That that was, it wasn't a scarcity issue. It was more of just like, I need to, to be very obedient to the Spirit and keep following that. So it was pretty gradual. Face it, when you seem to be a human being and you move through the day, we have a lot of options. When you have many, many options and you can't really discern among those options, what is the way to go, then I would call that, that's a guidance problem. In other words, the Holy Spirit is as loud as our willingness to listen. And the Course tells us, the voice for God speaks to me all through the day. So, if I've got all these options and I'm getting hung up on which ones to choose, and then I've got a decision-making problem and I've got a guidance problem, because the guidance is there, but if I'm not tuned into that guidance, then I'm listening to the ego. And no wonder it gets frustrating, confusing, I feel guilty, I feel trapped. I feel like, why did I do that? Or even more so, why did I say that? I can't believe that came out of my mouth. It's because of a connection problem. So, so here's what happened to me. I started off in spirituality like it was like probably in the really earnestly in the middle of the 1980s. And then, after 10 years of, of university and um, undergrad and graduate, I, I really could understand by that point that, that I did not have all the answers. That I, I really needed to unlearn just about everything <laughs> that I learned in 10 years of university. That that actually didn't bring me more peace of mind. It brought me more arrogance and pride, and I know, the I know attitude, I got a lot of that, but I, it's like, talk about a chip on your shoulder, Holy Spirit's like, uh, come on, come here, you've got a lot of work to do. And so, when the Course came into my life in 1986, you know, I could recognize the truth in it, I, I had a strong feeling with the book, like a lot of us do, and I was ready to like go to the nearest mountain and just ascend. Like, okay, I found it. Oh, it's over now. That's... And then the voice was like laughing, like, no, 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 we're at the beginning. Beginning, not the end. You're not ascending anywhere. You're not going up in a cloud, you know, and all that stuff. So once I really took that to heart, I had the book. I thought, wow. I really need a lot of mind training here. And so I could it was like an escape hatch out of out of guilt. So I actually read the book eight hours a day uh, for the first two and a half years. Not consecutively. My, my eyelids would get heavy. I had, I had probably the typical ego resistances that everyone would have with the course. But I would just be very gentle with myself and I, I averaged about eight hours a day. So I just totally immerse myself in it. It would be like getting a, like a life preserver when you're drowning in the ocean and really grabbing hold of it. And I mean, I didn't, I really didn't fight it. I really went with it. I yielded into the Course. You know, I would read statements in the Course that says, you will believe this Course entirely or not at all. And I would just go, okay. Let's go for entirely, because not at all, it doesn't seem to be a real good option. You know? uh, I would just say, full go, let's go full on into it. And, and when the Course said, you know, this Course has everything that you need, I took that literally. I quit reading the newspaper, magazines, I just thought, if this Course is my escape hatch, why am I going to distract myself with a lot of the things I've been distracting myself on for decades when I've got this beautiful, clear tool here to work with. 
So my guest podcast was somewhat unusual to, to read it for eight hours a day. And you know what happened after, after about two and a half years of giving myself that much immersion into it? That I started to hear Jesus talking to me in conversational terms. And not just like, all is love, all is God, all is one. It's like, you forgot your keys. Uh, turn left. I said, left. Uh, you, know, it, you know, really good practical stuff. You know? I mean, really good stuff. Not like, all is one. You know, I've heard all is one, and, and I didn't get all is one, but I, I need practical guidance. And so, it was really cool because that started to simplify my decision-making process. That started to simplify all those options. When you think about the trillions and trillions of options that we have, no wonder we're confused, it seems complicated, it seems like a struggle, it seems difficult. Because without a guide in choosing among those options, it just, it, it really seems like this world was set up so that you would never wake up. It looks like the biggest trap. Like this is Distractionville, you know. <laughs> Cosmos Distractionville, you know. And we've hit the most distracted point of the whole cosmos. Not like the moon or something. Like look at the choices that you have on this planet. So that made it much, much simpler. And then I found myself appreciating the guidance. It was the instructions that were being given to me. And, and then I would say, well, what do you want me to do? And in 1991, I took my first trip. And the first trip the Holy Spirit Jesus had me on was, let's go and let's meet some people here in the United States that have dedicated their lives to A Course in Miracles, like you're going to be doing, I was told. So it was kind of cool. I went off and I met a, a psychiatrist who had a course group and a Urantia group uh, at the same church in St. Louis. I, I went around, I went down through the Southwest. I, I met people who had spent a lot of time with Ken and Gloria Wapnick um, that were down in Oklahoma. I went down across to Sedona before they had the Circle of Atonement down there and Robert and Susan at the time and their children. I went there, I went out, I was out in, uh, in Southern California and, and uh, Beverly Hutchinson, her, her mother was alive at the time, I got to meet her. I got to go around and went up to the Bay Area here, uh, it was called the California Miracle Center back then when I popped in there and I think Tony and Larry were away but I got to meet some beautiful ministers there and and I went up to Whidbey Island, and I went across. I stopped off at this place in Wisconsin. It wasn't called Endeavor Academy then, it was called God's Country Place. This was pre-Endeavor Academy. And the Holy Spirit was like, oh, we're making the rounds here. You know, it's like I got to meet all these people that had dedicated their life to the course. And I found that that was a very inspirational trip, you know. And then I, I I went up, I spent time with Ken and Gloria Wapnick, up at Roscoe, New York, at the Casco Mountains, and I went to see Tara Singh when he was in Michigan, and you know, I just started to go meet people that were de dedicating their life to the Course. And it's, there's something about meeting people that have done it, that you're like, oh, I guess I can do this too. You know, it doesn't seem like it's like you're reading about Buddha or something <laughs> centuries ago, you know, like you're shaking their hand. Look at this. Look, they eat food and look, they've, they've got a car and, you know, they breathe and, you know, you're all excited because you're meeting them in the flesh and talking to them and somehow it just, you feel like you're, you're equal and you can do what they're doing. Uh, they're an inspiration to you. So that was really important. But, but it was listening to that voice was the most important thing. Like I'd go up and I'd be sitting there and Ken would be up there joking and giving lectures and Jesus was giving me commentary on Ken Wapnick's lectures. And I'm like, 
This is good. This is really good.